By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And of course, we play old school magic and uh, we're going to do that very thing today in this episode. I'm going to play Jesus from Jersey, USA. He is bringing an X points deck to the table, Black Weenie. It, uh, it's looking pretty good, but more about that in the deck deck section. And I'm playing against him with a deck called the Thalit Barrier. I'm really looking forward to try this deck out. We are playing X points, like I said. So that means we have this points list to keep in the back of our heads while we're brewing. And I'm, I've actually built a deck that is zero points. Well, to be more precise, I found this deck online and it's got zero points, but it looks so cool. I just, I build it and I'm going to try it out today and, and hopefully it stands a chance against the uh, the mono black uh, weenie deck that's looking mighty good, I, uh, I have to say. Anyway, before I jump into the deck decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this section of the video, go to the games first, I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those stamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games and you can always check out the deck decks after. And in that des description below, you can also find information about the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Yes, yes, I have one, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And uh, you can uh, find out how you can become a patron and uh, by doing so, you're supporting the channel financially. Just like Jesus is doing, you're becoming a part of the channel. So if that sounds cool, Check it out, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, now that you're fully informed by all the ins and outs, we're going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with my deck, the Thalit Barrier. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck that I'm playing with today. So I've called it the Thalit Barrier. And before I start explaining what this deck wants to do, I first have got to give a shout out to the person that I got this deck from because I found a deck photo here. You can see it. Uh, on Instagram. So it's from Classic MTG. He posted his version of a Thala deck. And I was like, oh man, this looks really cool. Because, you know, combining it with the Relic Barrier, the Howling Mine, and, and the Winter Orb, kind of that trick, that really kind of drew me in. I thought, oh, that is a lot of fun. You can have this soft lock and at the same time kind of start building your Thalit army. And I just really like Thalits. So I, I don't need a lot to convince me to play a Thalit list. So I thought, you know, let's try it out. And what I like about this list as well, it's that it's zero points. So it's got no pointed cards from X points in there. That's another thing that I like about it. And a third thing I like about it is that it has a lot of Fallen Empires. When I play a format that allows Fallen Empires, I always try to kind of give Fallen Empires a special place in that deck because I don't do that that often. So for me, it's still really fun, you know, to do so. Um, anyway, looking at the deck, what does the deck actually want to do? Well, the Thalits is a creature type that they have one thing in common. During your upkeep, you can put a Spore Counter on your Thalits. And then when you have three, that's kind of the magic number, you can uh, you can remove those counters and you get something back. So the most traditional thing to do, what most Thalits have, and here you can see your 1-1 one, one Thalit, one green for 1-1. One, one. You get the Spore Counter during your upkeep. When you have three counters, remove them. You get a 1-1 one, one green creature named Suproling. So you get a Suproling token. Now, this is quite slow, right? But you also have some other Thalits that do other things. Like this is the Thorn Thalit. Again, you got to collect up to three counters. When you've got them, you can take them off and you can ping. You can deal one damage to any target. It's like a Thalit Timmy. But again, super slow, right? Because you only have one upkeep each turn. So this is really a slow strategy. And then you've got, I'm also playing with Thalit Devourer, which is pretty cool. And the Devourer uh, can also make 1-1 one, one green Suproling tokens for three counters. But you can also sacrifice uh, a Suproling to give it uh, plus one, plus two. So you can also make it more beefy and it is a two, two as well. So th they're a little bit bigger. And then you also have a creature called Elvish Farmer. And Elvish Farmer actually was the most expensive card of Fallen Empire for the longest of times. And when I say expensive, I'm talking about five bucks, you know, <laughs> I'm not talking about expensive, expensive, but it was one of the most sought after cards in Fallen Empires. I love the art, by the way, by uh, Richard Kane Ferguson. So what this card do, uh, does, this is an O2. And again, you can make 1-1 one, one Suprolings after th having three counters. So it also collects these uh, these Spore counters. Uh, but you can also sack a Suproling for two life. And you don't have to tap uh, the uh, the Elvish Farmer to do so. So if you just have a lot of Suprolings, you really have a cushion against like a life cushion against, against your opponent. So that is quite nice. And I can see why that card 
is being played and why it's why it's good and then you also have the fungal bloom which is an enchantment and for two green you can put uh, spore counters on your creature so you can kind of see how this thing can get out of hand right so what you want to do with this game is you want to make sure that the game starts slowly and that you play out your thalates like crazy you want to go as fast as you can get those counters up get those counters up hopefully you know you can you can stay alive long enough uh to, to where you are at a certain point in the game that every single turn one of your thalates hits the three spore counters and you can do something obviously with some spore flowers you can make the whole process go a lot faster and that's really when the fun begins um, and because of course you're going to empty your hand quite quickly with this type of deck uh, you do want to have the howling mines because the, the other part of the deck is Howling Mine, uh, Relic Barrier, and Winter Orb. So Howling Mine and Winter Orb are two artifacts, one of the only two artifacts that you can tap to deactivate. So what you can do is you can play your Howling Mine, tap it with your Relic Barrier, meaning that your opponent only draws one card. When it's your turn, untap, upkeep, draw, you draw the two cards. Then when you're in your main, you use your Relic barrier, barrier to tap down the mine again. So you're drawing two cards and your opponent is only drawing one. So that's really a way to kind of keep your hand full, draw twice as many cards as your opponent. And um, yeah, that's just, that's, that's really good in any deck, but especially in this deck, because you're probably going to empty your hand pretty quickly. Then you also have Winter Orb. Now there are only two Winter Orbs in here, but Winter Orb is an artifact that says you can only untap one land a turn, right? So this is a way to kind of cre create a soft prison. And what you can do with this is, again, when you tap this artifact, it gets deactivated. So during your opponent's turn, you're going to make sure it's untapped. Then on this end step, you're going to tap your own Winter Orb. Then it's untap, upkeep, draw, right? So your untap phase, because your Winter Orb is tapped, it works as normal. The Winter Orb has no effect on your board, but it does have an effect on your opponent's board. So again, it's the little advantages that count. Um, now, there is a secret weapon in this uh, deck that I really want to mention because I think it's it's a card that is, I'm just going to say it, I say it too often, but it's underestimated. And that card is Thalonite Druid. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 green and 2. And for 1 green and 1, you can tap and sacrifice a creature and then your forests become 2-3 creatures until end of turn. And they're still lands. Now, this deck has 20 forests, right? Um, it, if you time it right, that can be your win con. And you can, of course, sacrifice a Suprolling token. You don't, you know, you probably have enough Suprolling tokens. So you sack a Suprolling token, all your forest or creatures, and, and they're two, three. They're pretty big, right? And then just attack and trample over your opponent. That is like a secret win con. Anyway, uh, this is the deck that I'm playing with today. I'm very excited about it. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent. And here we see the deck of Patron Jesus. And uh, yeah, this is your black weenie deck, right? And uh, it's very aggressive. He's playing with Stone Throwing Devils, you know, the 1-1 one, one first striker from Arabian Nights. He's playing, of course, with the Order of the Ebon Hand to Bump Knights. He's playing with the Black Knights. And really interesting, he's also playing with Kumbach Witches. And that's actually the card that I'm the most scared of. Kumbach Witches, a 1-3 for 2 black. So that alone is pretty decent value. But you can also tap it to deal 1 damage to any target. And then uh, the opponent gets to deal 1 damage back to any target as well. So sometimes it can... This can feel kind of like a non-bow. For example, when you've got the Kumbach Witches together with, for example, the Stone Throwing Devils, you could have this awkward scenario where you don't want to ping your opponent because then they can kill one of your creatures. But he's also playing with three Bad Moons. So when you've got your Bad Moons out, the toughness of your creatures is beefed and you can kind of use your Kumbach Witches. Now, the reason that I'm mentioning this card is that I'm quite scared of it. You know, I've got a lot of 1-1 one -one creatures of course, all my Suprolling tokens will be 1-1. One, one. If he's got two Kumbach Witches on the battlefield, he can almost mow all my creatures down. So, yeah, this is going to be really tough. I also think, in general, this could be a tough matchup for me because his deck is going to go so quickly. And also, he's got a lot of disruption in his deck. He's, of course, playing with the four him to Turex, the four Sinkholes. So he's going to slow me down, where I actually want to go faster than my opponent because I need time, right? Those Suprolings need their upkeeps to kind of flourish and looking at this list, I don't think I'm really going to get it. He's also playing uh, with three Dark Rituals. This is just looking like a very solid and strong list. Then uh, in the sideboard, he's also playing Underworld Dreams. I mean, that's not ideal for me. Remember those Howling Mines in my deck? That's going to be really tough. Um, 
Yeah, I think this could be a difficult matchup, but I'm, I'm going to give it a try. You know, let's see if I can get a win out or at least make it a decent game. Um, and, and what I like about this deck, by the way, this is just very traditional, right? Your mono black weenie. And it's cool to see that in a format like X points, these decks really matter and are quite strong. I mean, Jesus told me that he had pretty good results with this list. Okay, so this is the deck of Jesus. We've talked about my deck. Now let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So uh, I'm on the play, I believe. I'm sitting uh, on the left with the Timmy playmat, of course. It looks like I'm taking a mulligan starting with six. I'm playing the mono green Thalid deck. And I'm taking on Jesus, who's on mono black, a black weenie strategy, starting with the 1-1 Thalid. So every turn, the Thalid gets a uh, Suproling... Uh, no, it gets a spore counter on it. I should say this right. And, and when I have three spore counters, I can take them off to make a 1 1 Suproling. Jesus here also having a turn one play to 1 1 Stone Throwing Devils from Arabian Nights. It's a 1 1 with first strike. And uh, yeah, this is going to be an interesting match. I predict a lot of pressure early on from Jesus. So let's see what I can do at turn two. Tapping both of the forests. Ooh, there's a Howling Mine. So this is risky, of course, but I need those extra cards probably after taking the mulligan and being on the play. But of course, Jesus also loves these extra cards. His deck is really quick. He's got a lot of two drops, actually. He's got like him to Turak, Black Knight, Order of the Ebon Hand, Kumbach Witches. He's got Bat Moon. He's got so many options when he's got two mana. I think his deck needs three mana at most, but with two mana, it can function fine. So uh, really uh, could be a problematic turn for me here. It looks like he's going to attack first with the Stone Throwing Devils, putting me here on 19. Remember, it's got first strike. That's why I don't uh, want to trade because I can't. You know, my 1-1 would die. And now Jesus tapping two. There's a Kumbach Witches. Yeah, so this is a problem. Kumbach Witches, you can tap it. It's a 1-3 to deal one damage to any target. And then they can, uh, the opponent can also deal a damage back. So one of the options that Jesus has here is to ping my Thalid, kill it before it has the third spore counter on it but then of course i i can kill his uh stone throwing devil so perhaps he's not going to do it i'm keeping my fingers crossed here hoping that he's he doesn't want to make that uh, exchange playing out of forest here by the way it looks like i'm really in the tank i wonder what i'm thinking about probably trying to find a way to perhaps kill the kumbach witches but i don't think i really have that option in my deck i mean it's got three toughness that's going to be really difficult for me. Tapping two here. Okay, there's a Gaia's Touch. So this uh, enchantment is quite cool. An enchantment from the dark. Two green to cast. It allows you to play out an extra forest every turn. So I'm playing out my second forest. Sacking it here for two green. Ooh, there is the... Um, oh, what's it called again? It can put counters on, in this case, my Thalid Spore counters. It's the Fungal Bloom, I believe. And it's placed a third counter on my Thalit. And then I can take that off to make a 1-1 Suproling. So this is actually a pretty neat turn. Trying to do whatever I can to quickly empty my hand and get uh, the tokens engine going. And I wonder if Jesus is now going to ping my Thalit. But I mean, his hand is so full still. He's got eight cards now. And that against Black Weenie, that is scary. I mean, for me, a nightmare scenario here would be if he has a bad moon, because that means he can just kill my Thalad, and that one damage can really not do anything, cannot kill the Stone Throwing Devils. It looks like he is going to use the Kumbach Witches, kill the Thalad, so at least I can kill his Stone Throwing Devils here. Yeah, exactly. For a moment there, I thought I was going to deal a damage to Jesus, but of course I'm not doing, th doing that, so Jesus would actually get that life point back. He's still on 20. So this is bad, but not horrible. Okay, there's a Black Knight, <laughs> another Stone Throwing Devils. Oh, man. There's just, this deck is just putting so much pressure so early on the table. It's really tough for me to fight against. But, I mean, at least I've got a lot of force. So let's hope that I can find like a 2-2. Two -two. Okay, there it is. There's another Thalit. And I believe this one, um, it's a 2-2. Two -two, and every turn it gets uh, a counter, obviously. When you take three counters off, it can deal one damage to any target. And remember, I have that in Shaman that can place counters on my Thalets. So maybe I can get it high enough to start pinging down the army of Jesus. I'm still on 19. That's the positive thing about this whole thing. And Jesus should be on 20, by the way. But maybe those dice uh, track my life total. Anyway, there's the attack. Taking three points of damage here. Dropping to 16. 
But I'm sure he's going to play out more, man. His hand is chock full. Tapping three here. What are we going to see? There's an hypnotic specter. That is a problem. So end of turn, I can use my enchantment to put an extra counter there on the thalet. So an extra spore counter, a second spore counter. Drawing two cards for turn. I mean, it's difficult, but if I can just empty my hand, then hypnotic specter is not that bad. I believe I've got two cards in hand at the moment. Got six mana available. What can I do? I'm like really taking my time because there's just so much pressure here on my life total. And of course, I don't want to discard a card. There's another Thalet. Also tapping one. Okay, there is the 1-1 one, one Thalet. And this is actually not too bad because if Jesus chooses to use the Kumbach Witches to kill down the 1-1 one, one Thalet, then of course I can kill the Stone Throwing Devil. So I can make that exchange. I think... The worst card for me here in this scenario is if Jesus plays a bad moon. That would be really, really bad. There is another swamp. Well, actually, it's an Urborg, but it also taps for black. Tapping both. Untapping again. Okay. I guess we're discussing what the Urborg does. I believe it takes away first strike and swamp walk. Tapping two black. Oh, there's the bad moon. This is so bad. All these creatures gain plus one, plus one. Now, of course, I can't respond to this. One of the things I could do here is put an extra counter on one of my thalets. And then I've got three counters and I could ping the stone throwing devils for one. I think I'm going to do that right now. Exactly. Putting a third counter on, removing the counter. So in response to the bad moon. So before the bad moon is resolved, I'm killing the stone throwing devils. But this is just not great for me. Because now everything gets plus one, plus one. He's got a Kumbach, which is now it's a 2-4. I mean, how am I ever going to kill it? His Hypnotic is a 3-3. Three, three, and his Black Knight is a 3-3. Three, three. This is horrible. This is a horror scenario. Even if I double or triple block the Black Knight, it's going to be really tough to kill it. There's the attack. So probably just going to take six here. Going to take six. One of the things that I could have done looking back at it now, although no, that wouldn't have worked. I, I could have blocked maybe the Black Knight with everything, but then in response before damage is dealt, Jesus could have killed one of my creatures. I think I could have killed the Black Knight here, but it would have come with a serious cost. But maybe I should have done that, you know, just block on everything. Of course, the, the Black Knight has first strike, so it could have killed my 1-1 one, one Thalet and my 2-2. Two, two. Um, but yeah, I think I could have killed the uh, the Black Knight there. Anyway... Water under the bridge, now passing the turn. At least I've got the, the token, the counter generating engine kind of going. This is what my deck wants to do. So using that enchantment to create more counters. And then try to get value out of that. The problem, of course, is the Bad Moon, all those Kumbach Witches. I mean, he's got two now. He can start killing my, my bigger Thalets. What am I playing? Okay, there's a Sylvan Library again. I mean, I've got the Sylvan, I've got the, the Enchantment, I've got the Howling Mine. Usually that is really, really good. But the pressure of Jesus, it is a problem. I, I'm already on 10. I mean, I need to make more counters. I need to make more Spore counters to make it count. But that's just going to be really, really difficult. There's the activation of the Kumbach Witches. So I guess he's going to kill... My Thalet here, so in response, I could put extra counters on it and, and make another Suproling. Should I do that? You know, maybe then I can use it as a chump blocker next turn for the Black Knight. I mean, I got to think about my life total as well. So I'm really in the tank here again, thinking like if these creatures, if the Bad Moon wouldn't be there, I could now put two extra counters on the 2-2 two -two Thalet and then use those three Counters take them off to deal a damage to, for example, the, the Black Knight, right? And kill the Black Knight with that extra damage from the Witches. But in this case, it's not an option because they're both 3-3s. Three so this is what I'm going to do. Put extra counters on the Thalet and make another 1-1 one, one Suproling. Yeah, this is not really going to help me. And exactly, Jesus is on, still on 20. Okay, now he's taking a damage from his Witches. So he actually should be on 19 instead of 18. But I don't think this has a really big effect on the game, it looks like Jesus is uh, is really in control here. 
And I really like the fact that he's added Kumbach Witches to his build. You don't see it that... Although although the card's gaining popularity, actually. I won't say you don't see it that often, but you see it more often nowadays. Anyway, there's a chump block on the Black Knight, taking three more damage from the Hypnotic Spectre, losing my one card. So there's the other enchantment that I already have on the board, so that's not too bad. Seven life here. ay 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 I mean, this is going south fast. I don't really see a way of how I can survive this. Maybe if I draw a Desert Twister. There is a Sinkhole. Ah, oh, that is so annoying. I mean, Sinkhole usually this late in the game doesn't really have a value, but against me it does. Because, of course, I want to generate as many counters with that enchantment as I possibly can. And, I mean, this means I can make one Spore Counter less. Anyway, putting the sport counters on, and now I can look at the top four cards, which is really nice. Howling Mine and Sylvan, they work together quite well. So I can put my first top four cards in order, which is kind of sweet. I mean, I'm actually not unhappy about how my deck is performing. It's just, uh, yeah, there's just too much power and too much pressure coming from Jesus. So finding another forest, and I guess, I mean, I wonder what that other card is. Okay, there's the, it's, it's called the Fungal Bloom. I think it's an 0-1 creature. And when it has three sport counters on it, I can take them off for a fog effect. So the card's quite good. The problem is, I don't have enough mana to put three sport counters on it straight away. And exactly, the Kumbach Witches is going to kill it, so... The nice thing now, though, is if he's going to kill the O1, I could put an extra counter on both of those two two thalots, and I can deal three damage in total because I have that extra point of damage from the Kumbach Witches, and I could kill, for example, the Black Knight, or perhaps I should kill one of the Flyers because I cannot chump those. So, exactly, I think that's what I'm doing. So now I've got to choose taking all the counters off. I mean, i got to work so hard to kill a 3-3 three, three creature here. It's funny. It's hilarious. But I do love, you know, seeing my deck function. It's doing what it's supposed to do. But those Kumbach Witches are just really, really a killer. And of course, the Bad Moon is, is, is such a good card here in the deck of Jesus. Making it so hard for me. I mean, if those creatures would still be 2-2s, two at least it would be kind of doable. But I'm on 7. He's going he's gonna to attack. I mean, I could chump block. Probably going to chump block with my Suproling on the Black Knight if, if Jesus doesn't kill it before that. And I'm definitely going to take the 3 damage through the air, so I'll drop to 4. And of course, Jesus still having a, a full grip of cards because of my own Howling Mine. I'm also not finding the Relic Barrier. That, that's the one thing I guess I could complain about in this, in this first game, that I'm not finding the Relic to tap down my mind, because that's what I want to do, of course. I want to draw 2 cards and Jesus 1. Anyway, there we see Jesus pinging, exactly killing the Suproling. I would have done the same. This is, this is good magic. And uh, really problematic for me here, because even if I double block the Black Knight, it's not going to die, you know, because he's got three first strike damage to deal before he takes damage back. Oh, to make matters worse, there's a Paralyze tapping my 2-2. And now he can also attack with the Kumbach Witches, I believe. Oh, this is so bad. So attacking me with a 2-4 Kumbach, a 3-3 Hippie, and a 3-3 Black Knight. I mean, this is, this is a done deal. This is water under the bridge. I'm playing on borrowed time. Look at that. Dropping to four. I think I should actually drop to two, right? I'm also getting damage from the Kumbach Witches. I was on seven or was I higher? Anyway, I don't think it matters much. I'm not even untapping here my, my Thalit. This is my last turn. Let's make it count. Let's see if I can do something funny here at the final turn. Drawing two cards. There's a forest. And passing the turn, it seems. So I always like that. I like this. I like to let my opponent kind of sweat a little bit, you know, having this card in hand, which is probably just a forest or something. But uh, it's always nice. Kind of let my opponent finish it. There's the attack. So not attacking with the Kumbach. Tapping six. Oh, putting counters on it. Oh, that's funny. Hey, yep, it's a forest. Exactly. I I, it's funny. I recognize my gestures. <laughs> I can kind of see that I have nothing in hand. But uh, yeah, this is funny. I did, like I said, I'm not unhappy with how my deck is performing. It's just that 
yeah, if Jesus draws this well, there's not much I can do. And uh, yeah, but I did enjoy the game. Now we're both gonna dive into our sideboards. Let's see if I can, uh, yeah, think of something to give me a better chance in game number two. So we're just gonna shuffle up, look at our sideboards, and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So at least I'm not taking a mulligan, it seems, starting with seven. So does Jesus, there's a forest. Passing the turn, I wonder if maybe I boarded out the 1-1 one -one Thalets because of the Kumbach Witches. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, there's a Stone Throwing Devils, 1-1 one -one First Striker. Again, turn one for Jesus. Pressure from the get-go. Tapping two, what do I have? There's an Elvish Farmer, an 0-2 Creature. And uh, it can also make uh, Suproling, so it gets a Spore Counter every upkeep. Take three sp Spore Counters off to make a 1-1 one -one Suproling token. And you can also sack a Suproling token for two life. So it's, um, yeah, it's a good card. I really enjoy the art of uh, Richard King Ferguson on this one. Passing the turn here to Jesus. And I mean, his deck is so full of two drops. I mean, turn two is something I'm really scared of against his deck, actually. Are we going to see like him, for example? I guess I was lucky that way that in, um, in game one, we didn't see him to Turek. But I mean, a Black Knight, uh, yeah, this Bum Knight is also a really killer for me. At least he cannot attack with the 1-1 because my Elvish Farmer is an 0-2. So that's something, not taking any damage here. There's the first counter, of course, on the Farmer playing land number 3. So there should be a Thorn Thalet here, hopefully for me. Or a Thalet Devourer. Those are the two 2-2s uh, two that I'm playing a full playset off in the deck. There we go. No, this is something else. This is what cards is. Oh, this is Turex Chant. So Turex Chant, I believe it's called Turex Chant, is an enchantment for two green and one. And I have to pay one green during the upkeep. And what it says is that every time that Jesus plays a swamp, he has to take three points of damage or put a minus one, minus one counter on, uh, on one of his creatures. So this is actually nice. This is a card coming in from the sideboard. But uh, yeah, I am also a little bit worried, but because Jesus doesn't really need that many lands and he could also just take some damage because my deck is not at all aggressive. There we see him playing Urborg. Now this Urborg is a nice way to play around it. He doesn't have to take any damage because it's not a swamp, but it does give him an extra black mana. So that's quite nice for Jesus. And of course, the downside of this card is that it does cost me a forest every turn because of the upkeep. Oh man, a bad moon. This is bad news. Because it means he can now also attack with the Stone Throwing Devils. All black creatures gaining plus one, plus one, taking a hit of five here. Oh man, and this game is going south very quickly. I mean, I wonder if I should have boarded this card in, in the first place. I mean, wouldn't it just be better to have my 1-1 one, one Thalets? Anyway, tapping two green here. Okay, there's the Fungal Bloom. So this Fungal Bloom can kind of help me. Remember, two green and tap for this enchantment. Actually, I don't have to tap it. And you can put one Spore Counter on, um, and on in this case, the Elf, I guess. So passing the turn back here to Jesus. There's another Swamp. He, now he's taking damage. Okay, so my, my enchantment is kind of doing something. Putting Jesus on 17, but I mean, does it really matter? There's a sinkhole. Oh man, I really, really don't like these sinkholes. There's a terror uh, coming in from the sideboard, probably killing my, uh, my elf. This is really bad. This is really bad. This, this game two is going horrible for me. I mean, I'm on 10. My life's halved. And look at that, I'm letting my enchantment die, kind of like, I'm, it's not going to help me. I mean, th this card is good when you can put some pressure on your opponent, but I can't. So, okay, there's an AO Pile. This card is coming from the sideboard. Actually pretty good. Going to kill the Pump Knight here. So AO Pile, an artifact from Fallen Empires. Two to cast, one to use, one in sack. Deals two damage to any target, like a mini Fireball. Sorry, a mini Lightning Bolt, I mean. And it's, it's quite good. But the problem remains, I'm on 10, he can attack me for 2, put me on 8, but I have a little bit of time. Let's hope that Jesus cannot find anything to cast here. Keeping my fingers crossed, he only has 2 cards in hand. Hopefully, they're not creatures or bad moons. 
I know it's a lot to ask here from the magic gods, but uh, okay, Sinkle is not great, but not the worst either. At least not more pressure. I'm on eight. Can I find a way to get back into this? Maybe another AO pile, a mana and an AO pile to kill the stone throwing devils. I'm on eight, so I'm on a four turn clock here. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. You can see me tapping the cards, trying to find a way out of this. Tapping two green. What do I have for two green? Another farmer, perhaps. Untapping again. Okay. Changing my mind. Four cards in hand there. Passing the turn. Ouch. This really hurts. Also knowing my deck, I don't have a lot of instant speed spells. This really hurts. There's the attack. Dropping to six. At least Jesus is not playing extra creatures. I mean, I can't complain. There's a Relic Barrier. That's great, but not really that great. It's not going to help me. Passing the turn here. Jesus drawing card number three. I mean, maybe he's got a, he's got two terrors in hand. Like, who knows? So even if I draw into a creature, he's just going to kill it on the spot. Really uh, kind of problematic here. So he's tapping two. Oh, another bad moon. Come on, people. Attacking me for three. Oh, man. I'm on three. One last turn. What can I do? Can I at least cast a chump blocker? Okay. <laughs> There's the winter orb. Yeah, I mean, that card is not going to do anything against Jesus's deck. And I guess we're, we're talking about that. That means Jesus is winning here game number two as well. But don't go away yet. Because despite the fact that Jesus is winning this game, obviously. And uh, let, 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 let's watch him finish this. We have played a game number three. There's the attack. And uh, I'm dead. The end of the line. But we did play a game three. So don't go away. Because that game, I'm sure it's going to be spectacular. Game number three, here we go. And of course, I'm still on the play after losing the two previous games. Starting with a forced passing the turn to Jesus. Let's see if he has a stone throwing devils again. Just playing the swamp, passing the turn. Okay, that's a good start. I'm hopeful. No immediate pressure. There's an elvish farmer, turn two. That's pretty good. Now remember, I boarded out the thalets, right? The one ones. That's why you don't see a one drop from my side anymore because of those Kumbach witches. Let's see if Jesus can find one in turn two. Okay, there's a dark ritual. Four uh, mana in the pool. What can he do here with four? Oh man, double black knight? That is a killer. Two, two first strike pro white. And the pressure is on. So he just gave me that first turn, but that's it. Now we're serious again. I mean, his deck is so good. There's an AO pile. Okay, AO pile can help me taking away half of the problem. Only one Black Knight left to deal with. And those AO piles, of course, coming from the sideboard, they're quite good. Let's see what Jesus can do here. Turn number three, another swamp. There's the attack, dropping to 18, of course. Not blocking with the Elvish Farmer. It's an O2. There's a Kumbach Witches. Ah, oh, the Witches again. I mean, those Witches are going to give me nightmares. It's like horrible. You're thinking mono black that you don't have to worry about it, Timmy, but there are the witches. Anyway, here is the Thalid Devourer, a card we haven't seen yet in this match. It's a 2-2. It also can make Soproling, so you put a Spore Counter on every upkeep. Remove three Spore Counters, you can make a 1-1 one -one Soproling, but you can also use it to uh, sack a Soproling and give the Thalid Devourer plus 1, plus 2. So then you can make it a 3-4, meaning it can kill... The Black Knight. But of course, first it needs enough counters. We're not there yet. But of course, next turn out, I think about it, the Elvish Farmer is going to uh, to make a, a token. So that's kind of nice. Let's see what Jesus is going to do. I expect him to just attack. Exactly. Taking two more damage uh, points of damage. You're dropping to 16. But I mean, overall, oh, and he's passing the turn. He's not putting extra creatures on the board. I mean, this is good news for me. Jesus is giving me a little bit of time. He's giving me an opening. And now it's up to me to take full advantage of this. Now, what I'm liking about this board state as well is that I've got those, that Elvish Farmer. Remember, Elvish Farmer has a second ability where it says Sack of Soproling, gain two life. And that's quite important. 
One of the things I can do next turn is create a 1-1 Saproling, declare my 1-1 as a blocker to the Black Knight, and before damage is dealt, sack it to the Elvish Farmer. And of course, somewhere in between this process, I guess Jesus can use the Kumbach Witches, but then in response, I can still sack it, gain the life, and therefore not take any damage. There's another swamp being played out by Jesus, so five swamps for him. Let's see what he can do. A card like Hypnotic Spectre would be pretty devastating right now. Let's hope he doesn't have one. I'm keeping my fingers crossed here. I'm really hoping that the Thalid Barrier can get a win in here. At least one game win. I think the deck deserves it, even though this is, of course, a horrible matchup for the deck. Jesus really in the tank here, having three cards in hand. There's the attack with the Black Knight. Okay, let's see what I'm going to do. Taking the three counters off, creating a 1-1 one -one Saproling, declaring blocks. Am I going to sack it to the Farmer? And if so, yes, look at that. Declaring blocks before damage is dealt, sacking it to the Farmer. Is Jesus going to respond with an activation? No, he's not. One of the things he could do, but I'm not sure if that's really good for him, but he could, of course, choose to ping the 1-1 one -one with the Witches. But then, of course, in response, I can still sack it to the Elvish Farmer. Or, of course, he can kill it in response to me sacking it to the Farmer. But then, of course, he does take a damage, and I don't take damage from the Black Knight. So there's really not a line that's very beneficial for Jesus if you can still follow what I'm saying. Anyway, um, I'm playing Howling Mine, which is huge because now I've got Howling Mine Relic Barrier on line. Remember, if you tap Howling Mine down, it doesn't work anymore, meaning Jesus can only draw one card. Oh, my twist. Ah, oh, that is a killer. Jesus, you're a mean man. I'm so happy. And now you do this. Look at the cards that I'm losing. Hurricane, Fungal Bloom, Desert Twister. Sylvan Library, all these cards are great, especially that Hurricane against the potential Hypnotic Spectre, but also the Fungal Bloom, the Sylvan, wow, that was a power hand. There's the attack, taking the damage from the Knight, dropping to 16, passing the turn, ah, oh, this is a killer. Luckily for me though, I do have my Howling Mine Relic Barrier combo going, so I think it was a good decision to play out that Howling Mine and for example, not the Fungal Bloom or the Sylvan. Okay, there's a Fungal Bloom from the top. This is pretty good. I'm lucky here. Pointing out now that my Thalid Devourer has three counters on it. So remember, with Thalid Devourer, I can also sack a Saproll and give it plus one, plus two, meaning I can potentially kill the Black Knight next turn if Jesus decides to attack. One of the perks when you're playing with these kind of creatures is that your opponent doesn't always really know what they do. And of course, I do inform them about it. But you kind of sometimes forget anyway. And, you know, that can be in your advantage. Oh, a bad moon. That is bad news for me. And I'll tell you why. It means that Jesus' Black Knight is now a 3-3 first striker. So even if I make my Thalid Devourer 3-4, he can uh, deal one damage to the Thalid Devourer, meaning it already has a damage marked on it. And then the first strike damage comes in from the Knight and it gets killed on the spot before it can deal damage back to the Black Knight. So... Yeah, this is bad news for me. I can, of course, still do that trick with, you know, Saproling, blocking second to the Farmer, gaining life and blocking the Black Knight in the same, you know, action. But, um, yeah, it's going to be tough. Using here the Fungal Bloom, a third counter on the Farmer, taking the counters off. There is my Saproling, my brave Saproling, blocking and sacking, gaining two, going up to 18. So despite the fact that Jesus is the one attacking me, I'm actually gaining life and... I hope that also kind of works that Jesus is like, ah, oh, man, makes no sense to attack him. Anyway, let's see, let's see what else I can do. So some more counters, Dr again, drawing two cards. So right now I'm drawing twice as many cards as Jesus. And I believe that Jesus doesn't really have any answers to artifacts. Of course, Mono Black is really, really bad at dealing with artifacts. There's a Thorn Thalet. So this is kind of the Timmy Thalet, right? So I can remove three counters from the Thorn Thalet to deal one damage to any target. And, you know, that is going slow because you only get one counter a turn. But remember, I do have that Fungal Bloom, so I can kind of speed things up. Maybe try to, in a, in a, in a galaxy far, far away, you know, try to accumulate enough of these counters to maybe eventually kill the Black Knight or maybe even kill the Kumbach Witches, but that's going to be really difficult because the Witches now is four toughness because of the Bat Moon. So then I'll need 12 counters. 
I mean, that's insane, right? 12 counters on the Thorn Thalet. Has that ever happened before online? That's the question. I don't think so. So maybe I'll be the first one to do it. On the internets. That would be pretty cool. Anyway, passing the turn to Jesus. Drawing a card for turn. Another land. Okay, this is good. So Jesus really finding a lot of lands. That's good news for me. I mean, the only thing that he can do with the lands is, I believe, to just have, you know, pump it in his uh, order of the Ebon Hand if he draws into it later in the game. But for now, it's kind of dead mana for him. His deck really doesn't need more than three black mana. I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, is he going to attack here with the 3-3? Three, three? It looks like he's kind of wondering the same thing. Is it worth it to attack with my 3-3 three, three first striker? And he is turning it sideways. Let's see what I'm going to do. Taking the counters off. Making the token. Probably block and sack again. Exactly. Block and sack going back up to 20. And, and, and what you can see here in this game is the importance of the Elvish Farmer because not only am I not taking any damage, I'm also gaining life. And that, that's so important. So it's, it's doing more, you know, this, the, the, the Suproling engine, the factory is doing more than just making sure I don't take any damage. It is also creating life, which is, which is a big deal, of course. So I'm on 20 and again, drawing two cards because of my Howling Mind Relic Barrier combo here. Three cards in hand, passing the turn. Okay. That is not great. Then again, I mean, I of course want to keep green mana for my Fungal Bloom. Remember, if I can get my Thorn Thalet to enough counters, I can start killing some of the creatures on the side of, uh, of Jesus. Obviously, that's going to be tough because of that bad moon. Jesus now three cards in hand, a little bit in the tank here. Trying to decide what to do. If he attacks with the Black Knight, I can use the Fungal Bloom to, again, uh, make some counters and create another 1-1 one -one Suproling. There's the attack with the Black Knight. Just taking the damage. Look at that. Going to 17. Tapping a Black. There's a Stone Throwing Devils, which is now, of course, a 2-2 first striker because of the Bad Moon. Oh, look at that. So I really want to put all my axe in the Thorn Thalad basket. Three counters right now. And of course, untap upkeep. Let's put all the counters on there. Drawing two cards for turn. And what you can see me do is quite quickly tap down the Howling Mine because I've played with that combination before, the Parfait combination. And sometimes you forget. And then your opponent gets to draw two cards. That feels kind of bad if you have the Relic Barrier. But it's all part of magic. Sometimes you make a mistake. It is what it is. Anyway, playing a Forest here. Hopefully I don't make that mistake this uh, this third game though, because I'm just so excited that I kind of smell that this game has a potential for me. Like I, I I feel that maybe you know I can I can win. Anyway, putting another count here on the Thorn Thalet, five counters in total. And I'm really in the tank. I really want to make the right decision. Tapping three. What am I gonna do? Playing a Tranquility here. That's a card from the sideboard. Killing the Bad Moon, but of course losing my Fungal Bloom. Mm, I, I, uh, I get this, because now all the creatures are also weaker, so I'm really closer by with the Thorn Thalet. Looks like I want to kill the Stone Throne Devils, changing my mind. I think it's good that I'm changing my mind, because I only need one more counter on that Thorn Thalet, and then next turn I can kill the Black Knight, or maybe even save up and try to kill the Kumbach Witches. But I wonder if this is the right thing to do. I'm still on 17. Could have taken an extra hit and kept the Fungal Bloom around. Ooh, another Bad Moon. That is devastating. That is devastating. I think, I think Jesus kept that one in hand. Like he was waiting for me to play the Tranquility. In response, by the way, I'm taking the counters off of the Thorn Thalet to kill the... Uh, the Stone Throwing Devils before the Bad Moon resolves. So um, in response to that cast. That's something at least. But I mean, it's, it's, it's not ideal. It's still not looking bad for me though. But I mean, this, this Bad Moon is very annoying again. 
I wonder if he's going to turn the Black Knight sideways. I have enough counters, of course, to again make another Suprolink block in second before damage is dealt, gaining some more life. So Jesus having two cards in hand, really in the tank here at the moment, trying to figure out what to do. I wonder what those two cards are. I mean, if he's got like a Hypnotic Spectre, for example, that will be quite good. I mean, my deck hardly has any flyers. I did board in some Hurricanes from the sideboard, but yeah, I already lost one to the Mind Twist. Attacking here with the Black Knight. And again here, making the Suprolink, doing the trick again, blocking and sacking, so going back up to 19. Jesus tapping two. Ooh, Order of the Ebon Hand. So Order of the Ebon Hand is a 2-1 from Fallen Empire, nicknamed the Pump Knight, because you can pump it up. One black for first strike, two black for plus one, plus oh. And Jesus actually has quite a lot of swamps, so this is going to be an annoying creature to deal with. Annoying creature number two. And remember, it's not just a 2-1, it's now a 3-2 because of that bad moon. And I mean, my Thorn Thalet is going too slow. I really need another Fungal Bloom to speed up the process here. Okay, there's another Thorn Thalet. Okay, that's not too bad. That could that could do something. I mean, the more Thalets you have, like at a certain point, every single upkeep, one of your Thalets will have three counters on and you can do something with that, right? That's the whole idea. Passing the turn here, four cards in hand, it seems. Wow, that is a lot. Wonder what those four cards are because I'm not really doing anything impressive. Let's see what he's going to do. So attacking here with and the Order of the Ebon Hand and the Black Knight. So one of the lines of play I could take here is perhaps double block the Black Knight on my Thalid Devourer and perhaps the Thorn Thalid that I just played because then I have, uh, you know, four power blocking. And remember, I can make a Suprolink, sack a Suprolink to the Thalid Devourer, giving it plus one, plus two. So I would make it a three, four. So then I have a 3-4 and a 2-2 two, two, double blocking a 3-3 three, three first striker. So then one of the things that uh, Jesus could do is say, I'm going to put the first strike damage on the Thalid Devourer and then deal one final point of damage with the Kumbach Witches, killing the Thalid Devourer. But then, of course, Jesus still, still takes two damage from the Thorn Thalid. So that means two damage on the Black Knight. And then I can use those other three counters from the other Thorn Thalid to deal that final point of damage, killing the Black Knight. I'm not sure if you can still follow me, but to make a long story short, no matter what Jesus does, I'm going to kill that Black Knight. And now the question is, is he going to kill the Thorn Thalet or the Thalet Devourer? That's the choice he's going to make. The downside of this plan, though, is that, you know, Jesus is going to deal a lot of damage with that Order of the Ebon Hand, because it looks like I'm not going to block that. And he can pump it up, right? The Order of the Ebon Hand, he can give it plus four, 4 plus 0, so that would mean, I believe, 7 points of damage, and I'm on 19 at the moment, because it's it's got, it's a 3-2, and he can, for 2 black, he can give it plus 1 plus 0, but let's first see what I'm going to do, so I've pumped the Thalid Devourer to a 3-4, double blocking the Black Knight, not blocking the Order of the Ebon Hand, let's see if Jesus is going to pump it up. I mean, luckily for me, I'm still on a very high life total because of that Elvish Farmer. Pointing out, of course, that I do have the three counters still on the Thorn Thalet. And of course, Jesus is trying to think, is there a way that I can keep the Black Knight alive? You know, because remember, his damage is first strike damage. But I don't think there is. That's, of course, why I chose to double block here. And look at that, putting all his black mana into his pump knight. So I believe he's dealing seven points of damage here. Let's see what else is going to happen. It looks like I'm taking only four damage. It should be more, right? Taking five. I'm not sure if that's correct. The pump knight is three. 
and he's using eight mana so it should have a power of seven so it should deal seven damage and should go to 12 i believe but then again i guess before damage is dealt i'm sacking the thalit to the elvish farmer is that is that possible because i think the farmer only works on surprolings anyway I, I need to check that afterwards but i think that's what happened i think that's why i'm going on 14 so in response to that direct damage before that resolves but after he's declared the damage i sack it to the to the farmer i wonder if that's what happened or else or else we just missed two points of damage that's also a possibility anyway i'm on 14 after all the dust has settled here and the big problem now for me is that order of the abbot hand on the other hand oh look at this thalonite druid that is actually it's a one one and it's pretty good it's one green and two to cast one green and one tap sacrifice a creature each forest you control becomes a two three green creature forest until end of turn so then you've got an army of two threes that can attack that is pretty powerful so really happy with the thalonite druid it is a one one though so if Jesus wants, he could kill it here with the Kumbach Witches. I wonder if he's going to do that. If he does, it looks like he's going to do it. Okay, using it. And I'm quite excited about this. Why? Because remember, with Kumbach Witches, he deals one damage to my Druid, but I can deal one damage back to any target. So I can deal one damage to the Order of the Ebon Hand. Exactly. Take my counters off the Thorn Thalet. You can see me doing it here. Deal the second point of damage to the Order of the Ebon Hand, killing the Order of the Ebon Hand because it's just a 3-2. I mean, if this is really happening, this is huge. This is a turning point in the game. Okay, so we're, it looks like we're going back in time, maybe discussing this play. So I'm explaining, I think, what's happening here. We're discussing what happened. So Jesus is using the Kumach Witches, dealing a damage to Thelonite Druid. I'm dealing a damage back to, in this case, Order of the Ebon Hand, and then I use the three counters on the Thorn Thalet to deal another damage to the Order, killing the Order of the Ebon Hand. And of course, I'm quite happy with this. I still have the Kumach Witches, which is an issue, but it's only one creature. And look at, you know, Jesus only has one card in hand, and don't forget that for this entire game, almost, I've been drawing twice as many cards as Jesus. So yes, Jesus has resolved that Mind Twist, which was pretty devastating, but because of that Howling Mind Relic Barrier, I was able to get back pretty fast. I mean, I've got a huge card advantage over Jesus in this third game. And I think that makes all the difference here. And of course, that I was able to kind of, you know, kill that Black Knight with the AO pile early on in the game. That was pretty huge as well. And here we can see me putting more counters on. So it looks like I'm kind of, from going to a control position, I'm now going to go to a position where I can start putting some pressure maybe on the life total of Jesus. Remember, he's still on 20, hasn't taken a single point of damage. I mean, my deck is not great in dealing damage. Another forest here hitting the board, so two, four, six, seven forests. I could really use a Fungal Bloom. So I have two Thalid Devourers at the moment, a Thorn Thalid and an Elvish Farmer. So that means an 0-2, a 2-2, a 2-2, and a 2-2. And Jesus has 1-2-4. So those Kumbach Witches are bigger than all the creatures I've got on the board. That is funny. There's another Thalid Devourer and a Relic Barrier. The Relic Barrier is, of course, not very useful against Jesus. And that's a bit unfortunate as well. Usually you're playing against opponents that have, you know, Moxen, Ices, Factories. All these things that you love to tap down with your Relic Barrier, Suchis, Juggernauts. But it's not meant to be in this matchup. But of course, the Relic Barrier is still doing its job here with the mine, so I'm not complaining at all. Passing the turn here to Jesus. Two cards in hand. And it looks like he's just passing. Okay, this is ideal. On end step, going to make some Suprolings. Yeah, and now we can really see that Suproling Factory really working. Taking on my turn. Look at me go there, putting counters on my creatures. This is what I want to do with this deck, the Thalid Barrier. Tapping the Howling Mind again after my draw. Again, drawing two cards, ideal for me. Tapping two green. There's a Fungal Bloom. Okay, this is, this is, this is pretty big. This Fungal Bloom is going to speed things up. Remember, Fungal Bloom and Enchantment Fall Empires, 
pay two green, put a Supreme encounter on target uh, Thalit, I believe, or Fungus, or whatever creature type is called these days. But I can put extra counters on these creatures. And of course, that's great for the Thorn Thalit. So I can try to make enough counters on the Thorn Thalit to maybe kill the Kumbach Witches. Now, do remember, three counters equals only one point of damage. And the Kumbach Witches has four toughness. So I need 12 counters. That's going to take a while, but I think the Fungal Bloom is going to help me. In the meanwhile, we do see Jesus here tapping a black. What is he going to do with his black mana? What does he have? Maybe another Stone Throwing Devils? Just playing it just as a kind of a decoy? Which is not a bad idea because there's always a temptation where I use all my counters from the Thorn Thalet to kill. Oh, it's a Paralyzed. Oh, that's interesting. Of course, for me, it's not great. I'd rather not have a Paralyzed, but it's not the end of the world because my Thalets are still making the, the, the tokens, you know? So the Spore counters are still being put on. That, that's not going to stop because of the Paralyzed. And look at me go with the Fungal Bloom, putting two counters on the Thorn Thalet. So I believe five counters now on there. And of course, I'm getting uh, new counters this turn. Untap, upkeep. Let's put all the counters on there. Yeah, it's a party. Look at me go here. All those counters. All those spore counters. And of course, drawing two cards for turn. Tapping the mine. Being very disciplined about it. Playing another forest. And forests here are quite important because that means that I can place more counters with my fungal bloom. Look at me go here. Even more counters on the thorn thalad. I believe I've got seven counters now. Remember, I need 12. And it seemed like a very high number, but I'm already over the halfway line of getting there. So I'm on 7, need 12. Got a lot of force and a fungal bloom. I think I'm going to make it. Jesus drawing card number 2. There is a stone throwing devils, a 2-2. I should just ignore that. Just stay focused on the Kumbach Witches. Adding more counters, so 10 counters now in total. And again, my upkeep placing more counters on there. Look at that, 11 counters on the Thorn Thalet. Is it really going to happen? Am I going to kill the witches? Kill the witch! Do it! Yes! Here we go! I know, I know, I know this is game three. I already lost the match, but I'm so happy right now that I can see my deck doing what it's supposed to do and finally kill that Kumbaj Witch because, man, that is a tough card to play against. I'm so happy. And look at me go here, swinging in with two Thalad Devourers. Remember, there are two twos, but I can sack a Soproli to give it plus one, plus two. Jesus here taking the hits, gonna go down to 16 realizing that it's not good for him to block here. And I mean, this is going to be, it was already really tough for Jesus, but it looks like the end is near for him here. Drawing a second card, two cards in hand. And he is finding a lot of lands this match, by the way. And again, I'm using my Fungal Bloom on end step. Again, trying to refill my Thorn Thalet with counters. Untapping here, drawing two cards again. But first, of course, my upkeep. So untap upkeep. Let me look at all those beautiful counters. And maybe if you're an old school player, you probably recognize like the glass beads, right? That's how we used to work with the counters. Those were the things we used. I still have the pouch, by the way, that you got with the gift box with the light blue and the dark blue uh, counters. Pretty sweet. And look at that. Enough counters here to kill the stone throwing devils going in. For a big Thalet strike. Thalets assemble! Two, four, six, eight damage. Halving the life total of Jesus. Dropping to eight. He's got huge funguses coming his direction. You know, nature is turning against Jesus here. This is going to be really tough for him. Needs a little bit of a miracle. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. It's not the Miracle. It's a great creature, though. If you would have found that creature earlier in the game, that could have been devastating for me. Remember, I don't really have any flying creatures in my deck. Using the Fungal Bloom again on end step. 
I wonder if I'm going to try to uh, to kill it with the Thorn Thalet. What I could also do, of course, is just attack with my Thalet Devourers because I can always pump them to make them bigger and kill the Hippie if Jesus decides to block on it. And I think he's kind of forced to because he's on 8. Playing another Forest here. I mean, this game is pretty much done, but let's see how I'm going to finish it here. Tapping four, it seems, or five even. Oh, there's a Hurricane. Okay, of course, Hurricane, a card coming in from the sideboard. Dealing four points of damage here, killing the Hippie, and then killing him with the Thalots. And yes, of course, I could have finished it with the Hurricane, but I want to win with the Thalots, and I did. Ah. <sighs> Oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm just getting really excited and carried away, I guess. But it's just great to see the Thalid Barrier doing its thing. So thank you very much for your willingness to play a game three. And of course, more importantly, thank you so much for becoming a patron of the show. Welcome to Timmy Talks. Welcome to the channel. And also thank you, uh, the viewer, for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. Here in the back, you can see the wonderful, beautiful deck of Jesus that, of course... I mean, it's a good deck. It's better than the Thalid Barrier. But hey, I'm happy that the Thalid Barrier got to do its thing in game three. And uh, yeah, this, this mono black deck of Jesus, beautiful black uh, a deck, sorry. And I love the fact, Jesus, that you're playing with uh, with cards like Stone Throwing Devils and Kumbach Witches. Iconic cards and also really, really good in your deck. I mean, that's important too, right? That's the combination you're looking for. Anyway, this is the match of today. Before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And also, uh, please consider becoming a patron as well, just like Jesus, because by uh, becoming a patron, patron, you're helping me, you're supporting me to continue making these videos for you guys. So if you enjoy the content, please check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can become a supporter of the show. Talking about that, let's go, let's go and take a look at all the beautiful supporters of Timmy Talks. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Thank you to Samba Kazik!